Do you care about how you name your pipeline and dataset in Azure Data Factory? Well, I do. I think if you name it consistently and cleanly, it will look professional and also make it a lot easier for other people to understand. In today's video, I want to talk about naming convention and how I have been naming my pipelines and datasets in Data Factory. Stay tuned. What I will cover today is link services, integration runtime, dataset, and pipeline naming convention. Just so you know, Microsoft doesn't have fixed guideline on how you should name this. Microsoft did provide technical limitations available in Data Factory when it comes to naming convention. Firstly, special characters are not allowed. Characters like pluses, uh, hash, uh, slash, they are not allowed. Secondly, you need to start with a letter. So A, B, C, or the Z, and whether uppercase or lowercase, it's allowed. You cannot start with a number. And thirdly, Character dash, that is also not allowed, except for integration runtime. When it comes to naming your objects in Data Factory Pipeline, the general pipeline that I would recommend you to think about is the purpose of that object. So if you are creating a link service for, let's say, Azure SQL Database, then name it Link Service Azure SQL Database. If you're creating a pipeline that is copying data from Azure SQL Database into a data lake, for example, then you can name it pipeline database to data lake. Simple as that. Now, let me give you some examples. Um, for link services here, I like to name it this way. So I have three link services here and data lake, database, and S3. I always start for my link service, I always start with LS in uppercase, followed by underscore, and then the acronym of that connection source data. Yeah. So in this case, ATLS is for Azure Data Lake Store, for Azure SQL DB is LS underscore ASDB, and so on for AWS S3. Yeah. Just bear in mind if you create a new link service and you've named it once before, you cannot modify it after that. So you have to recreate it from scratch. Another example is for integration runtime. Because the runtime that I normally use a lot is the, the one provided by Microsoft here, the auto resolve integration runtime, and it's written in camel case. The first letter of each of the word is start with uppercase. I tend to follow this format as well. So second example with dataset, again, similar to link service, I like to name my dataset starting with DS underscore and the dataset that belongs to. So for example, I have two dataset here. One is for data lake and it's a CSV. I would name it DS underscore ATLS underscore CSV. It's not like, uh, it's not that I like uppercase, it's just that I think the acronym works. Uh, it's all like, uh, it's all an acronym here. And when I give you an example for the other one with the SQL database, similarly, I would probably name it in here, CS underscore ASDB. That's for the data set. When it comes to naming a pipeline, however, Again, comes back to the purpose. So I have these three uh, pipelines here. Let's say if I take this one, <coughs> this pipeline is actually just a copy from Azure SQL database, for example, to data lake. And I actually parameterize this uh, pipeline so that it can be reused multiple times. So what I tend to name pipeline like this, because this pipeline is a copy is doing a copy from SQL database to data lake. I would start with PL underscore, and then I type SDB underscore to ATLS. And because this pipeline is gonna be called by another pipeline, this pipeline is basically like a child pipeline of a parent pipeline. So I would 
call it ciao. PL underscore child underscore ASDB to ADLS. And I would save it that way. <clears throat> and similarly, if I have the pipeline that is calling the child pipeline, I would call it quite similar, which is PL instead of child, PL pipe, uh, parent underscore, so PL underscore parent underscore ESDB underscore two underscore ADLS. Yeah. Now, another example here, let's say I have this uh, Databricks notebook that I call, and the purpose of this pipeline uh, is just to execute this notebook. And again, I happen to parameterize this Databricks notebook as well. And, and what I can name this one is PL execute data breaks notebook. Just to give you some ideas how I've been naming this and that's it on today's video about naming convention in Azure Data Factory. I really hope this is useful. If you like my video, press like to support this channel and also subscribe for more videos about Microsoft Azure and also data engineering and data platform. Until then, 